Well, I didn't know I was dyslexic when I was at school. Um, I just thought I was maybe stupid. Um, and, um, you know, I'd look at an IQ test and, you know, have a complete blank. I just couldn't fill in anything. Um, you know, the same way that if I look at a Times crossword, you know, I'll have the same, same problem today. Um, and, you know, I'd look at the blackboard and, you know, go blank and slowly, you know, I was put to the very back of the class and sort of forgotten about. Um, uh, and, um, uh, and so, uh, you know, so basically I was, I was absolutely hopeless when it came to conventional education. Um, fortunately, I was quite good at sport. And um, so, you know, spent most of my time on the, on the sports fields until uh, one day I heard this almighty scream and, uh, and then realised it was myself and, and um, I uh, tore my cartilage in my knee so that, you know, that I no longer could do sport either. Um, so pretty hopeless, hopeless case by then. Um, um, but, um, but I knew what I was interested in and, um, uh, and, uh, and, um, you know, I was in, very much, very interested in what was going on in the world. Um, I was, uh, you know, I, I, I heard about the Vietnam war, which was an unnecessary war that the Americans were fighting. Um, and, um, and I just thought, look, maybe I should get out of school and try to, campaign to stop this war you know just enthusiastic young 15 year old um but um you know thought it was um, that was more important than me wasting my time trying to do school school work which, which i couldn't do anyway i think i i think i think that if you're not good at conventional uh work at school um you're made to feel stupid um i mean i was actually you know beaten at school but um uh, regularly um, uh, by the headmaster um, for you know not not getting you know not not be able to do my uh, work right and and that was just something that happened in those days I mean on a you know maybe twice a week you know or at least twice a month um, and um, uh, so uh, you know so you were you were certainly made to feel um, uh, uh, made to feel stupid um, now of course. Um, it's a definition, you know, the definition of um, what's stupid and what's not stupid. I mean, some people are good at conventional, you know, mathematics or conventional, uh, you know, good good at sort of pigeon learning French or, um, and and there are uh, you know other people that are good at good at other things and um, and you know I think you know I believe I'm good at other things, uh, but only discovered that once I'd left school. Um, and, um, you know, once I was starting to do things that really interested me and once I was genuinely interested in something, I learned very quickly. Um, and, um, and I think that applies to most people. I think that, um, you know, the, the, there are a lot of dyslexic people who have gone on to do great things. Churchill was a dyslexic person. He, he went on to run, run Great Britain and, you know, and, and fight, a, fight a war that saved our country. So... Yeah, so I think I'm good at. I, I think I'm, um, I'm. I'm a good Peter, people motivator. I'm good at surrounding myself with great people. Um, I genuinely love people. I think I'm good at praising people, never criticizing people. Um, and I think you know that's been my biggest my biggest strength. And I think for kids who are struggling at school, um, you know, I think the important thing is just is, is to try to just, just try to think of the one the one thing they're good at, and then just try to become really good at, good at that. What advice would I give to my younger self? Um, well, I'm very fortunate. I wouldn't change any anything I've done in my life, so I most slightly would want to want to um, repeat repeat everything again. Uh, in fact, I would give away everything just to be able to go back and start again. It's been been a blast.